everyone. Welcome back to the Gibbs Spotlight. My name is Haley Sandell, and I am a strategic visual communications intern here at the Gibbs College of Architecture. Today, I will be speaking with senior environmental design and public administration student, Sephra Kolker. Sephra has served as the SGA representative and student leader for the College of Architecture for the past four sessions. Hey, dude, what's up? Hey there. Hey, guys. How are you? Um, I'm really excited to be here. I hope you and all the listeners are staying safe and healthy right now. It is a crazy time, but it's especially important that we all weather through together. So uh, can you start by telling us a little about yourself? For sure. So first off, I am now officially a graduate of the College of Architecture, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I grew up dreaming of attending OU, and I'm now proud to call myself an OU alumna, so that's pretty exciting. Um, during my time in the College of Architecture, I was able to be a part of the Dean's Leadership Committee. Um, I also attended the Mayor's Development Roundtable as a student representative, and for the last three years, I've been able to attend the Study Abroad Benefit Night Dinner as a representative for the college. Dang, so you've been a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little. So when you decided OU was the place for you, uh, what made you want to study urban design? Great question. So I knew that I wanted to study something architecture related from a young age. You know, I grew up around a lot of art because my mom has been an artist for as long as I can remember. I was heavily influenced by all the work that she did, and I knew that I wanted to pursue a career that allowed me to merge creativity with my passion for the physical environment. Funnily enough, I have some specific memories as a child of drawing out town maps and floor plans, actually. You know, I was particularly obsessed with this around fourth or fifth grade. So That's I think, cool. I've, yeah, um, I think I've known for a really long time that I wanted to pursue an architectural field. And once I got to OU, I ended up changing my major a couple of times before, you know, finding a program that really worked for me and incorporated um, just different elements that I thought were necessary for my um, design career. Gotcha. So what, uh, I'm just curious, what majors did you start out in and how did you end up getting back to urban design? Oh my gosh. Um, I jumped around quite a bit, actually. I was a um, English major, I think at first. Um, and then I think, oh my gosh, it's been a long time. What did I jump to <laughs> next? Um, oh, I was interior design for a minute there. Um, but gotcha. yeah, it was <laughs> it was quite the ride. Yeah, well, I'm glad you landed where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, so, what do you think sets the <laughs> urban design program at Gibbs apart from other programs? You know, I really think it has a lot to do with the great faculty and staff that Gibbs has. As students, we're lucky to work with not only great classmates, but also faculty and staff that help us learn who we are as design professionals. The environment within Gibbs is definitely a supportive and collaborative one, and I think it really, really helps students to develop themselves and learn more about the kind of work that they'd like to do. Uh, what I think is really cool is I think we've done about eight of these no I think that's like the ninth or tenth podcast but in every single one people always mention how collaborative Gibbs is and also how much the professors work with the students I just want to point that out because that's kind of a cool little recurring motif yeah, no, I just actually got an email today from a professor who was just checking in and, you know, trying to see how we all were. And it's just that support system. And, you know, knowing that even though we've graduated, we we kind of always have a home at Gibbs. Um, and I think just knowing that we can all work together. And, you know, at the end of the day, even when we're in school, we can all just kind of come together and um, be kind of a family. That's, you know, that's something that's, it's a really nice thought to have in the back of your head. And just to have a family, you know, in, at a university that's so big, just, you know, having a group of people that know you well and get to know you throughout the years. Um, it's something that's really helped me, you know, grow in terms of confidence and in terms of preparing me for both a professional career and just like, you know, life in general. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you had mentioned the study abroad benefit dinner. Uh, I was there doing photography stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to me to see these alums who hadn't seen each other in a while. 
and everybody's still friends. Everybody keeps tab on each other. Yeah, no, I noticed that too. And I was at a table um, where everyone really knew each other and, you know, they did keep in contact. And that was something that really um, surprised me. And I'm looking forward to, you know, keeping contact with people and just being able to, um, you know, come back together, even if we live in different states after, you know, um, a couple of years, if we live, you know, elsewhere, we can all just come back together and, you know, kind of pick up where we left off. Yeah, definitely. So uh, do you have a favorite project you've worked on while at Gibbs? Um, If so, can you tell us a little about it? You know, um, my favorite classes were my landscape architecture ones. I enjoyed pretty much every project we did. Um, But I especially enjoyed, you know, the base maps we worked on in my junior year. Those were really fun. Um, But I would definitely say that my favorite project was a community improvement project that we took on to improve walkability for downtown Blanchard, Oklahoma. My team and I were able to construct an interactive vision board of sorts that hung alongside a store facing the street. When I heard that we were creating something that was supposed to increase foot traffic and walkability in the downtown area, um, I immediately thought of a vacation I had recently taken to Alaska at the time. So many of the towns and cities we visited there were extremely walkable and highly community-oriented. And, you know, I really drew from that experience, and I kind of wanted to bring that, um, kind of bring that back to the town of Blanchard. Um, so I was inspired by the global interactive art project that I first saw in, I believe it was either Seward or Anchorage. Um, and it was called Before I Die by Candy Chang. So although our vision, our version looks a little bit different, the idea was similar. Um, so basically Before I Die is a global art project that brings communities together by allowing individuals to reflect on what, uh, why, or sorry, what they'd like to accomplish before they die. In our version, yeah, I know it's, uh, it's definitely something to think about. (laughs) Um, but you know, in our version, we didn't want to get that, um, philosophical per se. (laughs) Um, so we, we kind of we kind of took a little bit of a different spin on it. Um, And in our version, we created a chalkboard that asked residents to reflect on their vision for the town. The board was a lot of fun to make. Um, There were lots of bright neon colors involved, and it was a showstopper for sure. I was lucky to be able to lead a team that was considerate of the residents' input. Um, They worked really well together, and they were really able to help bring my vision to life. That's really awesome, dude. Yeah, so yeah. One thing that Gibbs seems to focus a lot on is the human factor. And I think this project speaks directly to that. It really does. It was so, you know, it's something that anyone um, can really interact with. And what I liked about it was the fact that, you know, even kids who are just learning to write could go and have fun with that board. Um, they might not, you know, understand what the purpose of it is and they might be drawing pictures but you know anyone from the age of like what when do kids learn to write four five six I don't know it's been a long time (laughs) but you know little kids can write on it Um, anyone from you know elementary school age to you know people in their 90s can kind of come together and really reflect as a community and as a town um, about where what they want to see their town accomplish and their vision for the town and where they how they want to see their town grow and I thought that it was something that you know really really brought people together yeah of course and honestly who better to conceptualize their own town than the people who actually live there exactly that was that was really where I wanted to go with the project because you know um we as students, you know, we could go into this town and we could, you know, make recommendations and create projects and, um, you know, create different things that the residents could interact with. But I wanted to give them something that really made them think about their town and something that they had, you know, and that they were, that they played an active role in and kind of had a stake in. Yeah, they can make it theirs. They really can. So on a little different of a note, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you've served as the representative for SGA for the College of Architecture. 
Uh, can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, so I served as the College of Architecture representative in SGA for four sessions. Um, it was a lot of fun, and it was a really great learning experience. I enjoyed being able to work on projects and legislation that affected the student body as a whole, but also things that were specific to the College of Architecture. And, you know, one of the things I originally camp campaigned on sorry, was promoting a sense of collaboration and unity amongst Gibbs many different majors you know one problem and you know you mentioned this earlier um different like throughout the different podcasts people have talked about you know that sense of collaboration um yeah. and you know I was talking with different professors and different students and you know it, it was interesting to me that a couple of years ago that wasn't the case and you know I definitely felt like that as a freshman you know I came into class every day and it just felt like none of the majors really interacted with each other um, yeah. but this was something I'm proud to say I've seen change tremendously over the last couple of years. The College of Architecture Leadership Committee that I've had the fortune of working with has been really great about focusing on cultivating the sense of collaboration amongst the disciplines. Much of the work done on this committee revolves around planning events for the college, um, specifically events that are geared at promoting socialization between the disciplines. And, you know, one of the traditions we've been able to keep over the last couple of years is the yearly college mixer. It's a completely Aww. student. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. And I'm glad that we're, you know, able to keep it going because, you know, um, we're students. We have busy lives. Everyone has so many different things going on at once. But it's nice to be able to come back to that tradition year after year. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like I was saying, it's a completely student led initiative and it happens every year around um, February. And one of the things that was most important to me as a representative was ensuring that the projects I worked on were impactful and important to both the student body um, that I serve directly being, you know, the College of Architecture, um, but also the university community as a whole. My time in the Human Diversity, Ways and Means, and Gibbs Leadership Committees really helped me learn how to make an impact in a way that is both meaningful to students while also including constituents in the process. Honestly, I, I feel like every college needs more unity between disciplines. I'm yeah. a visual communication student, like I said, and um, in the art college, like there are so many different disciplines whether it just be between visual arts or performing arts or even more subsections between studio people and sculpture people like having somebody like you to combine those efforts and the different disciplines is really important to build a community it really is and I hope it's something that will continue you know both you know after me and the rest of the leadership committee have left because it's such an important thing and it's so important like you said to kind of develop that sense of community and establish um you know that sense of collaboration yeah and what a fantastic legacy to leave behind <laughs> yeah so um do you have any plans for after graduation um uh, i know it's kind of a crazy time right now but in the future you know it really is um for <laughs> me, it's mostly going to be about getting ready for grad school and um, I plan on pursuing a master's in landscape architecture so there's going to be a lot of prep work for that yeah um, yeah um and I'm really appreciative of this downtime, not only to be able to spend time with family, but also because it really allows me to focus on mapping out my plans for the future. So what makes you want to go for a master's in landscape architecture? It's um, It goes back to my landscape architecture classes. You know, one thing I really like about the program that I chose was the fact that we were allowed to choose from a variety of course offerings. Um, and we were, we were really exposed to a bunch of different things. We were exposed to landscape architecture, um, regional city planning. Um, I even took a course in called socio, ah, sociology of housing. And oh, cool. you know, yeah. Um, and you know, that, that really, it really, um, helped me combine, you know, apply my public administration 
um, education and like kind of merged the two and it, it, you know, it all just kind of came together and it was really cool. But, um, like I was saying, the reason I just kind of focused on lands, decided to focus on landscape architecture was, um, just because of the classes that I took and, you know, the projects that we completed and, so much of landscape architecture is about creating an environment in which like, you know, people interact with. And it's, there's so, I think as designers, there's so much that we can do to influence the built environment. Um, You know, that's kind of our job, but I think that I really wanted to work in a field that contributed to people's experience and, and kind of influence the way people experience the built environment. Yeah, definitely. Well, good for you. That's thank cool. you. We'll see. It's still it's still probably a few years in the making, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, naturally, as all good things are. So, I think that's about all I have for you today. Uh is there anything else you would like to add? Well, it's been great um, talking to you, but you know, I I think I'd really like to encourage Gibbs students to try their best to be as involved in the college as much as possible. So much of the time, I feel like as students, we're focused on completing our coursework and getting the job done and going home. Um, But, you know, so much can be learned from taking time to get to know both our environment and those who work with us in that environment. As designers, we are constantly working towards change, and I think those that can incite change in the best way possible are those who really know the environment in which they're working with and the people who they're working with, and, you know, it takes time to do that, and I really encourage students to spend their four or five years getting to really know their fellow peers, um, their fellow students, you know, faculty, staff, just everyone in the college. And I think that really makes a difference. And I think that it really shapes how your college experience is and your experience within Gibbs. And, you know, it definitely changed my college experience as a whole for the better. Absolutely. I completely agree. Having that extra layer of, uh, oh, community involvement and uh, getting involved with the organizations on campus, it adds a whole nother layer to your whole college experience. It really does. And, you know, it's interesting. There are so many, there are so many things I learned that, you know, you, you never really think about at first. And there are so many things that I've learned from being involved with all these organizations and with the college that, you know, as a freshman, I never realized could be a learning lesson or could be something to take away and you know just you know these can be in small little tiny ways or they can be big but you know they all kind of at the end of the day come together and you kind of realize like this is what my college experience was about this is what I learned from it and it definitely makes you you know a better and more well-rounded person absolutely And what a great way to flex your leadership skills and kind of learn how to do that than in college. Yeah. And it's such a great place, you know, kind of for learning, you know, what you want to be involved in and like what you want to be involved with. And just, you know, you can try out so many different things and you can really find the community that works for you. And, um, you know, you can just try everything, basically. Definitely. Well, thank you for talking with us today, Sephra. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks again for listening to the Gibbs Spotlight. Tune in next time to hear more stories from the Gibbs College of Architecture.